How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we're taking a look at Workhorse and I'm going to go over kind of the cost of their vehicles versus these other fleet vehicles, the old USPS trucks. And I realized that some of their investor presentation already does this, but I think it's interesting to kind of look and do your own research on it, right? So they can put up their numbers and they can be changed a little bit, right? Here and there to make it look a little bit more appealing. Uh, not that they do that necessarily too much or on purpose, but you know, it's kind of natural human instinct to do that a little bit. So I want to go over it, make sure that what they said was actually correct, and then take a look at what that kind of cost savings could mean for a big fleet of vehicles. So if you guys like this kind of thing, please leave a thumbs up. It did take you know a pretty good amount of time because I am no battery expert. I'm no expert in uh, electricity. I'm no electrician, so I don't know off the top of my head really how kilowatt hours and MPGE works and all that. So it took a lot of research, but I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers and we have some cool stuff coming up when we hit 10,000. So I really appreciate that. Also, if you want to watch a video from yesterday on when I'm selling workhorse stock, I talked about how I'm going to give away a free share so you can watch that and get that free share of stock. And if you guys don't mind supporting, you can get a free stock on Webull if you deposit $100 or more, or you can start investing with M1 Finance down there too, which is my favorite brokerage. So in Workhorse's investor presentation, we come to this page. So you can find this on the website if you haven't seen it already. And it's why customers choose Workhorse. And this is one of the most information packed pages on this investor presentation. So we can see here everything from mile per gallon E or MPGE of this versus the six mile per gallon UPS trucks, uh, reduced operating costs from $1 a mile to 36. And as you can see here, it says workhorse estimates. This is kind of where I'm thinking here. Maybe we should do our own research on this. Reduced maintenance cost, which is well known that it costs less to be electric. Increased driver satisfaction, retention and health. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of health there that these vehicles help you with. They meet sustainability goals, and you can see here, this is pretty interesting too, the different cost savings of this vehicle for the e-gen versus the gas. So this is an interesting chart. They say the normal vehicles are 304,000, and their vehicles are 134,000 throughout the lifespan of about 20 years. Now, I did a lot of independent research here, so we're going to go through the different line items. So the cost of the vehicle for Workhorse, they say, you know, it, they don't say exactly, but it looks like it's just over 50000 We're just going to say 50000 to make the numbers a little bit easier, but maybe it's fifty-two or fifty-five. there. It looks pretty close. And I looked up the cost of the USPS vehicle, the last one, so it was about 11651 but that was a while ago, so that converted to $2013. It says here is about 25126 I converted that. I could have just converted the original amount, but it says it's about $28,000. So that's where we got this ICE vehicle uh, is about $28,000. Now, as we move down the line, the next big cost is fuel cost. And again, I'll get to what this means for a large fleet at the end, but fuel cost, right? So this is one of the main things that attracts people to workhorse. And this is also one of the hardest things to actually look up. And what I did was I had to look up how many miles a day these vehicles drove. So, you know, they say about 110. It was kind of hard to figure out an average or find this. This is really the only site that I could figure it out from. But let's just say it's 110, like this website says. Uh, then you have to go and figure out, okay, how much electricity and what's the cost of electricity for these electric vehicles. It's obviously very easy to figure out the gas powered vehicles, how much this will actually cost based on an average miles per gallon and on the average cost of gas, right? So the hard thing is <laughs> the electric vehicles. So again, I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert in this, so make sure you're doing your own research. But uh, what I found out was these vehicles go by MPGE. So this is the number of miles that one of these electric vehicles can go based on the same energy equivalent of one gallon of gasoline. So it's basically how far it will go on 33.7 kilowatt hours of electricity. 
from there you have to base it on how much it costs for kilowatt hours in your state i actually went with 15 cents that's michigan's so overall i multiplied that by the number of days it would be used about 250 days in a year right so five days a week some holidays in there so 250 days a year times 20 years i figured out about 69,500. the difference between that and the ice vehicles take 110 divide by 10 and in the investor presentation here it says six miles per gallon for ups but when i looked it up and actually looked at what people said online they said really 10 miles per gallon now maybe they rounded but we're going to go with 10 miles per gallon to be a little bit safe here because that's what i found outside of workhorse so 10 miles per gallon about 11 gallons a day and we're going to base it on $2.50 worth of gas. You know, that will cost about $137,500 throughout the lifespan of the vehicle over 20 years. The next thing is the maintenance cost. And this is another big driver in EV. And this is maybe where I diverged a little bit from what they said here. So what I looked up and what I found online is that AAA says that all electric vehicles will cost about six cents per mile for maintenance and repairs. And that's about 17% cost savings from the normal ICE vehicles. So this is obviously for normal vehicles, uh, not for these kinds of delivery trucks. And it says that some vehicles like in New York City, they have an 80% reduction in maintenance costs. That was just this year to date. So that's obviously not averaged out as much, but I think that that is interesting. So there is a wide range there it's based on the vehicles that they have now and based on the new vehicles obviously so there could be a huge cost savings that i'm not accounting for but i went with 17 percent difference so 6.5 cents per mile times 250 days in the year times 20 years equals about thirty six thousand dollars now 17 percent more than that is forty three thousand seventy two dollars so this is a major difference between what i had and what workhorse had because workhorse said one hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of maintenance so that is a major difference maybe they are just talking about replacing some of the parts and maybe that wasn't taken into account with that other website uh, and they also say fifty seven thousand for maintenance but this is again why we're doing our own research right it's going to be different so from there, you have to look at what is the cost of these charging stations, right? So what does it actually cost to have these stations built? What does it cost to run them and all that kind of stuff? Because they'll have maintenance too, I'm sure. And the cost of charging stations, I could not find online. So it's through Duke Energy. They're partnered with them. But I could not find it through Duke's website. Uh, you know, there are a lot of cost incentives. So when I looked at their website, they have a lot of different programs to set up solar roofs and to get tax incentives. And a lot of these bigger, a lot of these bigger companies don't end up paying a lot of taxes anyways. Uh, they are able to write off a lot. So this might actually be pretty null. But from the investor presentation, they said infrastructure would be about $6,100 from Workhorse. So, you know, we'll just go with that number here. Now, overall... What we can see is my total for what I calculated for Workhorse was about $161,000 for one of the Workhorse vehicles compared to 208000 or 209000 for the ICE vehicles. Now, this is compared to Workhorse's estimate of 134000 for them and 304000 for the other vehicles. Again, maintenance is the main difference, I think. And then also... You know, I was looking at the old USPS vehicles, not the one that they're in competition for. So maybe Workhorse is looking at the other available vehicles. But overall, what does this mean for a fleet, right? So a big fleet of vehicles, what does it mean? So my cost difference based on my evaluation times 10,000 vehicles would account for about $472 million. So that is a big cost savings, right? Now the Workhorse estimate their difference is about $1.7 billion. So obviously that is a lot more significant than what I found because of the difference in the maintenance cost mostly. The savings per year, so this is over a 20 year span, based on my evaluation was about 24 million. The savings per year on their evaluation was about 85 million. Now, I think that they are pretty right on with their estimates. Obviously they know better than I do, but I want to do my own research because looking through this, how many people know what MPGE is? How many people know about kilowatt hours? 
and actually know the maintenance costs and figuring out how much they actually are able to reduce per mile. You know, I like to do my own independent research. So on something like this, if I had to explain this to someone else and they asked me, oh, how'd they get those numbers? I'd have no idea. So I wanted to do my own research, but let me know your thoughts below. If you know a lot better than I do, please let me know because you know I am always open to new ideas. Again, I, I've talked about Workhorse a lot, but this is something that I had never really broken down myself. And you have to use multiple slides to kind of get a picture on this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for using those links below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.